Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick Maths module on fluid dynamics. This video is about the Bernoulli equation. Uh, let's start with some recap and the motivation for deriving the Bernoulli equation. Uh, we have derived the Navier-Stokes equations and here are the incompressible version uh, of those. Uh, the first equation is conservation of momentum and the second equation is conservation of mass and uh, when we discussed this we talked about the role of pressure in these equations uh, we have an equation for evolving velocity but we don't have an equation for evolving pressure with time instead pressure is said to satisfy uh, is said to establish itself such that mass conservation is uh, satisfied at all times which means even though the velocity at this instance may satisfy the uh, incompressibility condition uh, it is not guaranteed that after the velocity evolves under the action of these terms that the velocity at subsequent times will satisfy incompressibility but the pressure comes in and gets rid of any part of these terms that would cause a violation of, uh, of incompressibility in the future and thus enforces that the velocity field remains incompressible for all times. Uh, and this uh, indirect role of pressure is always a cause of difficulty in solving these types of uh, equations, in, sol in solving the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, the same problem also exists for the Euler equation, uh, in which case the viscosity, the coefficient of viscosity is zero, and the fluid is inviscid. So the Newtonian constitutive law has nothing to do with this. It's the condition of incompressibility. And while we are at it, uh, the equation we are going to derive uh, will try will try and attempt to find an explicit expression for this pressure p in the same way in the same vein as hydrostatics for example look at the, our result from hydrostatics our hydrostatics gave us an explicit expression for the pressure right so in the same way we want to somehow see if we can extend uh, the momentum conservation equation in the presence of a non-trivial flow to derive an explicit expression for pressure. Right. So that is our objective for this video. And in order to uh, accomplish that, which is we can accomplish that in some special circumstances, and those circumstances are not without their own significance, uh, in order to see what those uh, circumstances are, we are going to start with deriving an identity, a vector identity, between the velocity and the vorticity uh, omega. Uh, the vorticity is the curl of velocity. And if you want to refresh your memory about vorticity, uh, I recommend that you browse through the deformation of infinite symbol fluid elements again, which will introduce you again, reintroduce you to the vorticity. So this uh, identity reads that the cross product of u and omega can be written in terms of these two terms. The first term is the gradient of something scalar and the second term is u dot grad u which appears in our Navier-Stokes equations. If you want to see a proof, the proof is on the side. It just uses index notation. This is a situation where you can't, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult to see the proof without index notation. Index notation just makes it so easy. Uh, and our approach now is going, we are going to solve this equation for u dot grad u and substitute that in there and rearrange the momentum equation. That's what I have done here. I have just substituted u dot grad u in terms of these two terms and that is our equation but I want to rearrange the terms of this equation so that they become conducive to some interpretation and to also um, 
uh, an examination of all the cases in which we can um, derive an explicit expression for pressure. Okay. And this is the rearranged form where I have rho times du dt there and I have collected all the terms that are inside a gradient. There is a gradient of u squared over 2, there is a gradient of pressure and just like we did in hydrostatics we can write uh, rho g as the gradient of rho g dot x right, if g is a constant. Right, so let me write this assuming g is a constant. Now this is not such a strict assumption if g is the gradient of some scalar then obviously that case can be treated by just writing rho g as the gradient of that scalar in here and the terms that remain are the viscous uh, term mu times del square u that's written there and uh, this term involving the cross product of vorticity with velocity u cross omega so and I made an error there this should have been a plus Now you look at this equation and you say well this looks these two terms look like hydrostatics and it looks like when you have a flow you get an additional term in there but there's a problem I don't know what to do with this time derivative term this viscous term and this third term which is the cross product and if you stare at it long enough which is what uh, Daniel Bernoulli did he uh, we can come up with two possible cases in which this equation can be used to solve explicitly for pressure and the first case goes as follows we start with this equation star and in this equation we assume that the flow is steady so the time derivative is zero of velocity and the flow is inviscid and therefore the viscous term is zero because the coefficient of viscosity is zero then our master equation star becomes this and we can now interpret it and also mathematically show this but I think the mathematical proof will follows immediately after you understand the interpretation let's call the quantity inside the gradient just for shorthand b twiddle b for Bernoulli twiddle All right. and the twiddle is because I'm going to also define another uh, so-called Bernoulli function Bernoulli function so I can interpret this equation as the following B twiddle changes because I have a gradient here that means it has a rate of change B twiddle changes only in the direction of the right hand side and the direction of the right hand side is the direction of the cross product of u cross omega which means the direction of the right hand side is perpendicular to both u and omega that's the first interpretation b twiddle changes only in that direction therefore in the direction of u or in the direction of omega this function does not change because both these directions are orthogonal to the uh, gradient of our function b twiddle in other words B twiddle is constant along a streamline because streamline is everywhere tangent to you and therefore if you move along a direction uh, parallel to you move along a direction along the velocity then this term u cross omega is going to be zero along that direction and therefore our function B twiddle does not change along that direction so B twiddle is constant along a streamline and by the same logic although we are going to use this second uh, interpretation much less if we just like we define a streamline to be everywhere tangent to you if we define a vortex line and this is done a vortex line is an established fluid dynamical concept uh, if we define the vortex line to be everywhere tangent to the fluid vorticity omega then we can also conclude that b twiddle is constant along a vortex line uh, to summarize the conclusion of this is that for steady 
in visit flow we can derive an explicit expression for pressure by recognizing that along a streamline this quantity involving the pressure is a constant so i can take all the other things on the other side and write pressure in terms of that now how do you determine this constant you have to know something about what happens to the streamline either far away or at some point along the flow etc but this is at the most general conclusion you can draw for steady inviscid flow the rest will depend on the specific situation the specific application and in fact we are going to see an application of see multiple applications of uh, this case later on the second case is that of potential flow right you ask me what is potential flow this is the first time i'm going to introduce potential flow but we are going to have a whole chapter maybe a week dedicated to potential flow potential flow is the situation when the velocity everywhere and at all times or in a region of space and at all times is given by the gradient of some scalar potential phi right phi is called the velocity potential let us call that because you take its gradient and you get the velocity now let's see what happens when you substitute this expression in our master equation labeled star and let me go up and show you what happens to one of the terms because that's an important term when you substitute gradient of phi for this velocity i can write this term also as a gradient which means i can in include this inside that gradient and that's the first step i have done here i have included the gradient of d phi dt which is du dt i have taken the gradient out and left the d phi dt inside the gradient and combined with the other terms in the gradient the remaining terms are again this is a typo plus plus the remaining terms are, are rho u cross omega on the right hand side and mu del square u on the right hand side now it turns out for potential flow both of these are zero you ask why well because for the first term omega is zero omega is the curl of velocity and velocity is the gradient of a potential and from a vector identity that says curl of a gradient is identically zero omega is identically zero which means this term vanishes the second term we have to use uh, incompressibility when you use incompressibility and you substitute gray, uh, the potential assumption then we have del square of phi equals 0 and thus when we try to substitute velocity as the gradient of potential in this term we have del square of u is del square of gradient of phi which is the gradient of del square of phi but del square of phi is 0 so this term is also 0 and in this case we are left with a very simple interpretation because the right hand side is 0 that means b hat has got to be a constant everywhere right you don't have to worry about the direction along which it is a constant so b hat is a constant everywhere but the small caveat is that because this is put, this is an unsteady potential flow this the flow could vary with time our constant of integration may also vary with time so the conclusion is that the second bernoulli function b hat is only a function of time written the expression for b hat is written here is a function of time alone and you'll have to figure out what this function of time is by knowing something about what happens at one point for example at infinity somewhere okay or at any special point about which you have some information and uh, this form of bernoulli equation is also used especially this form is used when you know your flow is a potential flow and uh, this has a uh, humongous application because a lot of flows uh have a, a a description in terms of potential flow at least in part of the domain maybe not everywhere 
but in part of the domain uh, you can describe the flow using potential flow and therefore you can use Bernoulli's uh, equation to determine the pressure. So that concludes this video. The next video is on the application of uh, Bernoulli equation. I will see you again in that next video or in another live session. Bye-bye.